So we've gone over um, several examples of how to find an equation for a tangent plane uh, to the graph of some surface uh, with, with equation z equals f of x, y. Uh, but uh, sometimes it can be a little bit more tricky when you have surfaces that cannot be expressed in that way. Um, so, for example, uh, it, it's, it, everything is easy. When you can do this, everything is easy when you can say z equals f of xy. You take the first partial derivatives of f with respect to x and y, and that gives you the slope of the tangent line in the direction of the, of the x and y axis. Um, so then what you can do is you make two vectors from those tangent lines, and once you know uh, that two, ten two tangent vectors to a surface, you can figure out an equation for the plane. Um, so with parametrized surfaces, it, it, it's not quite as obvious how, how to do this. Uh, so, so let's see by example how, how, we, how we can do this. Um, so suppose we have, say, a cylinder. So a cylinder is easily parametrized by R of UV equals uh, It's basically the parameterization of a circle where a third coordinate can possibly vary as much as it wants. So, uh, cosine of u i plus sine of u j, that, that's the circle part, right? So, so, in other words, Just with that parameterization alone, that's not a very good circle, is it? Um, so draw the circle first in the x-y plane, and uh, still not very good. I'm sorry. And yeah, that's better. Um, so then, ah, that's that's there we go. Okay. Okay, so this vector equation here, we, we haven't used V yet, obviously. So, so this vector equation here um, is a circle in the x y plane. Uh, but now we just tack on V, the extra, and not U, right? Because remember that this has to vary independently of U and V. Um, so V, okay. Um, and now we can stack these things on top of each other. And it also goes in the other direction. Well, I mean, let's, let's just take, for example, uh, you go from 0 to 2 pi, uh, you go from 0 to infinity. Okay, so how do we figure out what two tangent vectors are to the surface? So, so let's call this represent this this as a representation of a surface S. So how do we figure out what two tangent lines are to uh, the surface S at, at, at a point? So say a point P on the surface. Um, well, what, what's going to help, remember that what the partial derivatives do is that they kind of, they, they make this like this mesh of, of, of level level um, curves, right, uh, in the direction of the independent variables. But remember that the, the independent variables are u and v before their x, y, and z here. So what, what we're going to do is we're going to end up with, with level curves in, in directions that are not necessarily the x and y axis if we vary u and v. So what we already said what, what they are when we vary u, we already said that they're circles. So, what we're going to get here with little slices 
is we're going to get circles that are stacked on top of each other. Now when we vary V, we're going to get lines. So if we take a point P, I, I don't know, let's, let's take any point. Let's take um, uh, the point Point one zero three. So we want to figure out when this happens, first of all. This, this will happen, of course, uh, when u equals zero and v equals three. Because when u equals zero, the cosine of zero is one, the sine of zero is zero, and three equals three. So, uh, so th this is the point. The point P is touched when u equals zero and v equals three. Okay. So now we have our point on the plane. But we want to know what are kind of the slopes in the x and the y direction. Well, here's the thing. Is that well, well we know we, it doesn't have to be in the x and y direction the way that it, we'd normally think of it. We, but all it has to do is it has to be tangent and independent. In other words, not facing in the same direction. We would get that precisely by taking the partial derivatives of the vector equation with respect to its independent variable. So, in other words, partial r, partial u, which is, of course, the vector equation where you take the, the partial derivative with respect to u component-wise. So that would be negative sine of u cosine of u, zero. And so when u equals zero and v equals three, so we'll evaluate this at u equals zero and v equals three, we're going to get that this is zero, one, zero. So what does that vector look like at the point P? Well, sorry, our, our P is, yeah, so this is this. So, um, sorry, no, it's not. This is P. Right. Anyway, so one, a zero, one, zero. So that means the vector that goes in the direction zero in the x direction, one in the y direction, and zero in the v direction. So this is our first tangent vector to the surface. Let me draw it a little bigger. Uh, and our second could be given by partial r, partial v, which is off of that, 0, 0, 1, everywhere. It's always facing up, right? Because that's the direction that V is always going. Like, like that's the direction that those that those contours are always going. Um, because it's defined that way. It's defined to be the vector V. So it, it just keeps going up. So a tangent in that direction would just be a unit going up. Um, so that would be this vector here. I apologize for a hard to so, so we have two vectors, and in, in this case, they, they don't go in the partial with respect to x, partial with respect to y. They, they could go in any direction. So, here are our two vectors. And here's a point on the plane. So, now, we can do what we normally did. We could take the cross product of, let's just, let's just call this vector a. Let's just call this vector B. We can take the cross product of A and B, get a third vector, and that will be a normal vector to the plane. And once we have our normal vector to the plane, we use that as the coefficients on X, Y, and Z, and do what we normally do. Okay? Thank you.